Oh, good. Wait a minute. I think we are now live. Hopefully, okay, it's popping up. Everybody's probably going to see an ad for about 30 seconds, so we can still uh, say nothing or talk about nothing okay. for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Go to your channel, little thing. So, I turn the, I dim the lights behind me a little bit. Oh, did you didn't happen to hear my friend Asterios uh, talking about that? Did you? Oh, I might have. I might have listened to that. <laughs> oh, no. Wait, wait. What was the criticism? In the newest Boomer versus Zoomer, <laughs> we talked about the whole debacle, and Asterios is critiquing his uh, backlights, which I I had uh, no qualms with myself, but Asterios, he has an eye for backlighting. Well, it's another one of those things where I'd already done it, too, because a couple of communiques ago, I dimmed them so you could see the jellyfish better, so <laughs> Yeah, those aren't live I, jellyfish, are I they? would have that light there right behind my head, and I just like the way it would pop in and out, so I would pop it out at certain points. But, uh, yeah, it can be annoying. Uh, I'm, I'm here to serve my minions. All right, people in the we chat, live? we're trying to balance the audio. Uh, people are saying, I'm a little quiet. I'm as loud as I can be, so does it help if I turn them down? Uh, sheep, let me know. And once we have all the audios balanced, we will get started with the show uh you guys uh, okay. talk a little turn... bit so we can compare wait are you gonna do yes. that on your end or should i turn my mic down no no your mic will be fine i can do it on my end test test is that annoying can you hear me okay without this mic yeah you sound great without the mic okay good okay good more good i think the left guy are those actual jellyfish uh, my mom gave that to me. Those are like these rubber things that, okay. uh, yeah, there's a little fan or something on the bottom that makes them float around. All right, I'm I really told... want to get an aquarium. Okay. What? No, I'm, I'm being told our audio is now good. So, uh, we can get started with the official show whenever you guys are. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. I just do a little shtick at the beginning. So what are they going to see? Uh, they see all three of us right now. And if, if you want to see it yourself, you can just open up on the internet, twitch.tv slash Mumkey Jones. Oh, okay. You can see me sitting in the dark with the warm glow of the computer screen on my pale white face. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's like a, uh, what, 10, 15 second delay or something like that? Yeah, yeah. All righty, I'll just get us going. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's a stupid show. I know I have written an opening as well, so oh, let's perfect. get going. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Monkey Jones interview show. And we do not have Drake Bell today, unfortunately. We have a much better guest of television fame. That's right, it is one Mr. Johnny Hardwick, one of the writers, producers, and voice actors on the beloved cartoon King of the Hill, and I'm also joined by Rusty Cage. That's right, we have Rusty Shackleford and Rusty Cage in the house. Welcome, gentlemen. All the Rusties. Welcome. It's good to be here. Hello. Now, I, I believe you said you had uh, an opening you had planned, so please uh, lay it out on oh, us. We're ready. Oh, all right. I had to make this hat bigger so it would fit over these headphones. <laughs> Let's see how that's going to work. And let me turn on the, hit the record button. Yes, the communicate live from the monkey <laughs> show number 15. It's oh, me, man. it's me, Rusty Tiberius Shackleford. Rusty Tiberius Shackleford, welcome to. Mm. Rusty T is good going down as the impending aftermath. Welcome to. <laughs> The Rusty Report. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, we both just have. <laughs> now, Rusty, exactly Rusty Cage. Rusty you Cage actually. I think you just have a cousin. Yeah, I don't have the. Uh, I don't have the horn on there. I forgot to do the humming part. So I think okay. doing it backwards. Before we started the call, Yay! Rusty Cage was actually practicing the King of the Hill theme song on his guitar in Kazoo. Do you wanna? Do you wanna give us a live show, Rust? Okay. <laughs> he, okay. He really we'll wanted to back, impress you. We'll get back to this later, people. Oh, sorry. I forgot you're doing your intro. No, I want to hear oh. this. That's okay. just like a right. 
I mean, that is not, I keep slipping into Johnny Rambler is the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Took off his headphones. <laughs> he had to walk away. Hey, I don't blame him. It's not the uh, not the best sound. Yes! Yes! Oh my God! It's a duet. Yeah. Oh, I gotta find that key. How does that beginning go? I don't know. I used to know how to play it. All right. Uh, <laughs> Let me put this capo back on. Shout out to the refreshments. Yes. Shout out. Okay, are we done with that? Hold on. Let me put this over here. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. We're going to get a copyright strike for, for playing uh, this song, the yeah, theme song. It was too good. Nobody's listening to this. No need to worry. Okay, today, the Rusty Report from Dale Gribble's YouTube channel, Johnny Hardwick, by way of twitch.tv dot slash monkey jones and Skype. <laughs> Finally, welcome our special guests. In fact, my first guests ever. I'm recording this, so they are like the Bill Murray of the Rusty Report, except I couldn't get him. The 800 number was busy. <laughs> <laughs> Nor his personal number, which only I, Rusty T, have stolen. We'll call Bill later first. My first question is for Rusty Cage. Yep, Rusty C. Yes. Rusty, you are a very talented musician, so. Thank you, sir. Uh, when you do the uh, Bird Box Night Challenge game song thing, a beautiful video, <laughs> we do not do this at home, kids. Do it in an emergency room just in case. That's a big, big, rusty tip. Uh, okay. Are you going to do Anywho. it? Yes, I am a Mumble Depec champion as well. Observe. When I stab my knife, I start out slow. Ah! 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 Oh, God. He's <laughs> Barbecue sauce. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Okay, it appears to have stopped. Oh, thank God. If I start bleeding, sorry, guys. Um, just a little. Wait a minute. Um, okay. I am now. Kids, do not do this at my house, okay? At least go to one of those rip-off 24-hour emergency strip mall clinics and do it outside. There's a good audience there. Oh, my finger is starting to bleed. It's starting to bleed more. I need paper. Oh, geez. <laughs> Just Man, yesterday, he... I saw the episode where Hank accidentally cuts off Dale's finger with a saw. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a... Uh, uh, <laughs> Jesus. Rusty D, good for um, when you're losing blood. Hold on. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I am getting on my good snap button shirt now. Here's a paper towel that I'm full. I couldn't lick another bite. Hold on. Okay. All right. Snitch an right. artery. I, I need to get a bowl and save this for Red Cross. Bring that Shriners <laughs> Hospital blood disease boy over here who needed my weird blood type. I am ready now. <laughs> Sorry about before. I hate the sight of blood minions. What's his Don't name? Little, little Daniel Jeff Boon. Sorry. Daniel Jeff Boom. I'm sorry I bowed out at the last minute. I hate the sight of blood. This is all for you. You and my best friend. May he forever sleep rest in a peaceful blanket. Adorably peaceful. Oh, my finger. I got ketchup on it. I mean, on blood, on the blanket. Oops. I think it's subscriber. Subscriber, if you're watching, to my YouTube channel, Johnny Hardwick. So we can save little Daniel Boom each subscription. Luckily, the blanket ketchup, I mean, the blood color. <laughs> you can get wet wear Rusty T's new line of fashion men's underwear. Everyone brown on the back half and yellow on the front. Hey, sounds like something I've seen. So my second question uh, is, welcome to the Rusty Report, everyone. It's for Monkey Jones. How are you doing? I feel for you, brother. I have been through bad times. Uh, I'm feeling fantastic bad right now. Bad times. 
Yeah, any time any time your banana goes it. bad, I, I feel bad too. I mean, as a as a monkey man myself, I hate to see those non ripe bananas. Yes, times that would break your bones like an incel who's mad at, at your collab. How are you? Do you need some money? More handsome and virile, Fred Savage. <laughs> one, Fred Savage. One, I never saw uh, it. One, Bill Dotry. Two, Grandpa Cotton. Three, Dale Gribble Madness. I gotta say, I think. No, wait, wait. Con is third. Dale is fourth. All of a sudden. Oh our... no. Oh Can't no. You run us, monkey. Yes, I listen to you in Asperios's wonderful interview. Wait, that's not funny. Let's call Bill Murray up. Yeah, in case the audience is not aware, Asterios and I did a podcast about King of the Hill recently, and I listed my, my top four favorite characters, and unfortunately, Dale Gribble was only fourth place. I'm so sorry. First man, do you have a straight photogenic... Oh, I started at the wrong end. <laughs> da, da, do you have a straight photogenic... Da, da, long, perfectly formed penis... Then keep dum, eating dum. This thing is magnificent. No, feel the texture. <laughs> My penis is, is is too short to have any curve in it. So it, yes, it is perfectly straight. <laughs> this is just the most surreal moment. Now we are going to talk about the demon crash. <laughs> ah! Ah! Once again! Once again! No! Do you just have a vat of ketchup next to your computer? <laughs> Oh, okay. No, it's a vat of blood. Who who doesn't? It's a bowl. I'm gonna dip some crackers in <laughs> crackers and ketchup. A classic meal. What um what okay, made you want to start a YouTube channel? Let me turn this off. <laughs> that was tomorrow's communique. Okay. Perfect. All right. So, as you were saying, so Rus what, Rusty. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what made you want to start a YouTube channel? This is this is insanity. Oh, well, it started at a thanks for asking. <laughs> Very ask entertaining. The same thing. Oh, hell, Chancellor Susan. I uh, I started a few years ago. I was just put, uh, putting funny stuff up. Let me move this. <laughs> I was putting funny stuff up on the, my Facebook page. So I had to put it on. There's blood all over. Look at this. <laughs> Free monkey. Here, let me. No, there's that's the screen. No, that's more yeah. authentic. Yeah, he was uh, I was struck down. I was put I mean, for friends, and people would go do a deal. I do. I did a Dale Grubble thing on Facebook. I, you know, and sometimes I wouldn't even put them on. Uh, I would just post them straight to Facebook, but people were liking those, so I just kept doing those. Yeah, imagine they get pretty popular on Facebook. I haven't, I haven't seen the page. No, 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 not really. No, okay. <laughs> I did like, I, I, up to the point that Monkey came into my life, I would get like uh, 168 hits on a comedy music video or something like that, you know. I don't know. You were doing pretty now, well before like I came around. I mean, I, I wouldn't have found you unless you had that one video blow up and get hundreds of thousands of views from uh, Reddit and other places. That's how I found uh, your channel. Yeah, and that one I did for, uh, and Pocket Sand's not a Trump song, but I did. I, I didn't say it was. <laughs> I know, I know. We were having fun, fans. Yeah. I, I, the whole channel's a lot of fun. And month. If people take nothing away from this interview, it's that uh, I, I think they should go subscribe to your channel because it's every single day. Folks, if you're a fan of King of the Hill, there's one episode where Dale starts an underground radio network that only has like a three-block radius where he just goes crazy. And now every single day on the Johnny Hardwick channel, he is essentially doing that show with his communique. And it is, it's just delightful in, in every sense of the word. I really enjoy it. I just subscribed Thank you. myself. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoy you guys' channel. Hmm. Now, now I'm kind of confused because I've I've been off of social media for the past few weeks. But how is this even happening? Uh, I, I don't understand well, exactly. I received a text from my uh, trailer metal partner. I can tell you about that later. That's my animated World War Three rock and roll spaghetti western. Oh hell yeah! Uh, that, yeah, I've got a uh, on my YouTube channel, Johnny Hardwick. Subscribe. 
Uh, there's a promo for it that's really cool. It's about 30 seconds. So that's what I've been. That's another thing I've been working on. I mean, I do this as I'm doing the YouTube channel kind of as a hobby, but I, I, I was trying to get. I wanted to get back into stand up, so I was working on my act and stuff. So I've been working out material, and but when Monkey hit, <laughs> my my partner Scott St. Louis sent me a. He sent me a link to Monkey's video of the problem with Dale. Dale Gribble's YouTube channel, and I had not seen it. And in fairness to Mumpke, uh, that was, I, it's shocking to see Dale Gribble play guitar more than anything else to sure, me. True, true. Funny, it's funny when he plays piano, but if he's hitting these licks and playing Here Comes the Sun, it just doesn't, if I played it badly, it might work, but that's impossible. That's right. Uh, okay, geez. thank you. Um, but, uh, uh, so what were we talking about? Well, yeah, okay. like so. So, I I guess Mumpke, you just made maybe you can explain this Mumpke because I I saw a little bit um, of the videos that you were posting back and forth, but I I wasn't up to date on oh, what initially well, seemed like it was drama, <laughs> and then it kind of changed into everyone switching sides and <laughs> like now we're all good well, friends here. Let me tell you, my initial response was this long. I had Mumpke read it on that interview. And, and Mumpke, I can send you the final one because I copied it and saved it before yeah. I... Why did you change the message so many times? Why not just uh, post new ones when you have new ideas? Well, when I get on a word processor and I start writing, it's real stream of consciousness. And then I can't... Keep, I just write a certain way. I can't keep from doing it. Okay. <laughs> and then I just keep editing. But at some point, I just realized the whole thing was a big circle jerk. <laughs> and I was the lead, you know, hand in it. <laughs> well, I, I thought it was funny the whole time. And it, people were wondering. I, I'm glad you got it. I mean, it, yeah. this is all 4D or 5D chess or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Thing. Yeah. And I almost got checkmated right off the gate. Almost. Almost. But the battle Almost. continues. Now, that's a bald eagle with, was it Ronald Reagan writing on it? Uh, no, it doesn't have any Ronald Reagan writing on it. Oh, I don't know. I don't know who that character is. Neat. It's just a bald eagle. I thought it was individual number one. Individual number one. Oh, he is also up there. Let me get him down. Okay. He's always keeps sending up in these weird positions, but you can yeah. see uh, okay. how handsome he is. I have no choice but to tell you, you're fired. <laughs> Whoa, who's doing that voice? It's horrible. Yeah, here. That's all it says. It's supposed to say a bunch of different things. There's a snake in my boots. Let me guess, it was made in China. Now, being a King of the Hill fan, you're familiar with the episode, The Exterminator, where Dale is hired as a uh, human resources guy at Stick Tech and fires people. That's right. Your what season was that? You're fired. I think it was fifth season or something. It was six years before The Apprentice came on television. Oh, you think, so, you think Donald oh, Trump oh, ripped shit. you off? I know Trump ripped me off, and uh, he also ripped off the whole conspiracy, crazy, conspiracy weirdo <laughs> character and everything. Donald Trump is the Dale okay. Dribble of presidents. Yes, exactly. When are you going to run for if president? You think of it that way, it makes it a little bit more easy to, to take. Are you going to run in the 2020 election? Am I going to run? Yeah. Uh, no, no. Is Rusty Shackleford going to run? If the yellow party, uh, if we can get that going, yes, I will stage an entire, uh, I was intending, anyway, I've been getting this stuff ready for a big kind of 2020 uh, campaign comedy tour thing. Oh, so, you're going to go uh, on tour around the U.S.? Because I would love to come to a show. Yeah. yeah, that's the idea. Hell yeah, where are you going? <laughs> Everywhere. Come to Florida. Yeah, come to That's Florida. One thing nobody ever does for any reason. Okay. I got friends in Marcus Island. I'll come out there. They were hit by the hurricane. So you say you're getting back into stand up. Um, how long have you been doing stand up in general? Did you take a break? Uh, well, I did stand up for like 10 years up until I worked on King of the Hill. And then I, I didn't do it much after that. Um, so, <laughs> and I've gone up uh, occasionally at the, one of the local 
clubs down in downtown Austin, the Velveeta Room. I've gone up there a few times since I've, I've been back in town about three years in Austin. So now, are they pretty uh, generally well received, or or you you get take your licks, get heckled, or uh, are bombs sometimes? I feel like stand up's the hardest thing oh, yeah. that I yeah. never want to yeah. do. The bombing keeps you out of it. I mean, yeah. and I've been out of it for years. And I had um, there was a after King of the Hill ended. There was about a. I mean, there's like almost ten years ago. You know. Yeah, sure. I guess it has been. Uh, yeah, I was uh, being a caregiver for my wife during that mm -hmm. period. So I didn't have a chance to get out as much as I wanted to, but I did. Uh, now I'm kind of I'm back in Austin and, and I'm, I'm uh, got divorced too. Um, and uh, that's a whole story involving when the Austin police arrested me, and that's a whole nother story. Well, I did not know that. Wow. Oh, they not only arrested me, they tortured me for 36 hours in an underground lolly port because I told them I go I'm. I, they said I was a. a intoxicated vagrant i've been uh, i went to rehab four and a half years ago i've been sober but there i was just down there playing my guitar and someone called in and the cops come over and they're not hearing any of it and i said uh, they're going you're I'm like what's the charge they're like vagrancy they're cuffing me and i'm like i, I own a house i paid cash for a couple of blocks from here Rusty, it's yeah, like looking I, into I the go, future. Okay, here's the one. I go, actually, I played Dale Gribble on King of the Hill. And I go, I go to, to further emphasize the fact, I go to the two police officers. I go, pocket sand. <laughs> <laughs> and they cuffed me and they took me for observation to the psycho board. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, another episode. And then Never what if uh, Bill and Hank had to come and get there. you out? They took me down to this underground lab lolly port, which is, uh, it's somewhere, it's not the normal place the cops take you. And this big garage comes up. This is in downtown Austin. And I go down into this uh, parking area, this concrete parking area. And they go, get out of the car. And I'm cuffed in the back of the car. And I go, okay. And I go like this, right? They grab my ankles and they yank me out of the back of the police car. And so I come out like this and I'm like suspended above the concrete for a second. And then blam, uh, it completely huge gash. I'm, it just went blam and almost knocked me out. I just saw stars and I had this Fuck. blood start gushing out. They never apologized for it, the Austin peace officers. Now, um, are you sure that these are the, the police, or are these like the secret police uh, that kind of can operate outside of the law? Yeah, they would wear these like blue rubber league gloves and stuff. Yeah. They were very weird. I thought they might have been robots at some point. They shot me up with, uh, they kept sticking needles in my ankles. They had me shackled by my uh, knees and uh in this kind of rolling chair thing that they rolled into this sealed chamber over this grate in the middle. And I'm wearing this Nazi, uh, their prison uniform. It's the same uniform as, as that they used to put okay. the, the, Psychological the, warfare. In the concentration camp. And this was all for vagrancy. Sure. Yeah, I know vagrancy. Hell, that's a, it's a hell of a charge. Yeah. They couldn't just check the IMDb. <laughs> A long time they're questioning me. This guy's got a needle in the side of my head because they were trying to patch up this eye thing. Ugh. This one cop, cop has a needle in my head. And there's this other we Ron Weasley. She was the head lady cop with this white hair albino, like Big Bad Bob in uh, Judge Roy Bean. And she's over my older sh other shoulder. And I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm like... I was pretending I was Rick from Rick and Morty the whole time. <laughs> so they, were, they did not think everything I said, you know, like when they were, they had me up against the wall and they're doing the, the glove search and I turned to the oh, officer geez. and I go, I think you missed a spot and stuff like that. Do you have but anything I, up there? I shackled and they've got this needle. They took a white, they put a white bag over my head for a while and I'm like in Guantanamo Bay going, what is going on? And they take the needle off, the, the, um, they take this bag off my head that they put on to, I found out later to keep you from spitting. 
And this guy sticks a needle in here, and uh, and I go, you, you know, you guys, uh, they're going to reboot King of the Hill soon, and they're going to be looking for me. So why don't we, <laughs> why don't we just let me go right now? And yeah, this sign a few autographs. The cop in charge, this head sarge lady, she goes, I swear to God, I will never forget these words. She goes, nobody here gives a good goddamn about fucking King of the Hill. <laughs> Well, she's a fucking liar. And I like roll my eyes over here to this guy with the needle in my head. And I go, is that true, officer? And he goes, well, my kids watch it. <laughs> <laughs> and this lady gets so mad. She's like about to explode. But I was there about, I was there 36 hours total. I was there 20 hours. And then I, I made an elevator escape. Okay. You escaped from captivity? Yes, they they came in at some point. They got so sick of me. They come in and they go, put your clothes back on. And so I put my clothes back on. They unshackle me. <laughs> they take Rusty me down. unshackleford. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it, it was waiting for it. <laughs> Stupid. <Sorry. laughs> unshackleford. Uh, can I use that? When I uh, Mike Judge wants to animate this story, he said, but he had had a few beers, so oh. <laughs> give him a few more. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Well, uh, I did have a, a few King of the Hill related questions for you. Okay, let me finish the elevator escape. Oh real shit! Quick. You're right. Yeah, my bad. So good, because they were going down the hallway and they put their clothes on, and I swear to God, I thought they were going to kill me. They had put me on lithium or something. They were shooting all these needles at me, and I was just tripping my balls off. And they're taking me uh, down the hallway, and the cop goes, "This one cop, this big, these both guys were huge." And they go, "You shouldn't, have, you should stop talking a long time ago." That's all I want to say. And we come up to this elevator, and they push the down button, and I'm like, "I'm, this is it," because the cops are killing everybody every day at this point, right? Sure. It's all a news and calling. Copernic and everybody and so and so the elevator door opens and I go after you officers and they go no and they shove me into the back into the back of this elevator right boom and they come in these two big fat guys I mean these two big uh weight challenge guys and these <laughs> Dale can say that but the doors are closing and I swear to God I'm just sitting there looking at them go close like this and I'm looking at the gap between these two guys and I literally went like this and I went oh and I just leaped myself out sideways through that closing doors and they Classic. shut and I the look on their face I go shut 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 you can't jail the Dale and it closed <laughs> behind them, and I'm out in the hallway again, and there's nobody there, and there's an exit door right there, and I walk outside the exit door, and I am out on downtown Austin again. And I walk home, and I go into my wife, and my head's all bloody and everything, and I walk in there, and I'm like, the cops captured me. <laughs> I don't know what she thought, you know. Now, we're you said you were four years sober at this point? No, I'm four and a half years now, so oh. this is... A year and a half ago. So were there so. any repercussions of world famous voice actor uh, Johnny Hardwick escaping police captivity w without any? W was there any <laughs> recourse? No, they recaptured me. Oh. I went home to my wife and I said, I got captured by the police and they tortured me and I've got blood all over me. And my wife is sitting on She goes, Hello, police. <laughs> <laughs> well, I called I the police on me. So I go running out of the house and I run back down to South Congress where my friends are and we're sitting there and I go, I escaped. And they're like, yay. And all of a sudden this cop car pulls in. I don't know how they knew I was there. And they go, Mr. And I swear to God, the guy goes, Mr. Hardwick, why did you escape from the elevator? He's shining this light. <laughs> and I go, because you were torturing me. And they grabbed me and they put me back and they took me back again. For like another 16 hours of this, they never fed me. They never gave me water. What the hell? 36 hours total. And yeah. And uh, did the story ever end up on like TMZ or anything like that? And I'm sitting there and an officer comes by and I look over to the, uh, I wasn't shackled in the thing this time. And I look over uh, to the office. The window, I go, Excuse me, officer, I was supposed to be let go. Could you check on that? Within two minutes, I was let out. It was, it's I, exactly I like the episode where you could have uh, unadmitted yourself the entire time. Yeah. 
<laughs> when Boomhauer falls asleep on the inner tube and he wakes up in an insane asylum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well have you uh y you gotta think they they found you pretty easily that that <laughs> second time maybe they left something behind whenever they were um searching your cavity <laughs> like a tracker <laughs> wow. uh, yeah later on i i mean and i had these uh my my right hand was numb for six months that was fun from sure. the these cuffs they're like self-restricting cuffs and they get tighter and tighter and tighter right right Oh, it was when they had me cut behind my back. It was like my hands were going to come off. I was just like going, "Oh shit!" No run-ins with the police since then, though. No, no. Oh yes, there was. Uh, after they let me out, like a few days later, I go down to. I decide to get a tattoo to commemorate it. Right, <laughs> the, that I lived through it because I was. They were. I. They were chasing me around for a while. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, so I got, I got, I'm going to get a, a tattoo of the a who target and it says, uh, won't get fooled again. <laughs> so I go down to Southside tattoo and I have Royce draw it up this thing. And, uh, I go and he goes, you know, it'll be about 40 minutes. So I go down the street and I sit down and I'm having a coffee on the corner. Arr! This is like four days after I was released, right? Arr! This cop car pulls up. Uh, and this is just in the middle of the day. Four days later, a cop car pulls up and they arrest me and they what? put me in co county for three days. For, for three what? days in county lockup. Vagrancy? It, no, the San Jose Hotel, it turns out the same guy, he's this Nazi they hired to look after the parking lot. Uh, and from the police reports, I found out he called me in the first time. Well, I had gone into the San Jose Hotel just before that, and I had I had walked up very politely to these ladies at the front, and I said, excuse me, my car was towed from here the other day. Could you tell me where to find it? And they said, call the city, and I said, thank you very much, and I walked out. Well, in the police report, he says I walked in and threatened them. So he called and said I threatened them, hand, yeah. and they put me in county for three days. God damn. Now, are, are you ever worried that you're being gang stalked or are you familiar with gang stalking? Uh, I it sounds like something I've done. It's like a, a conspiracy where uh, there's there's a, a, a ton of individuals that aren't working for any one specific organization that follow you around to harass you and to drive oh, you insane. No, no, I've never okay. worried about that. Yeah. All right, good. I have to ask everyone. I have that. been. Uh, <laughs> my my business manager called me about six months ago uh, to tell me that I had to do something about my uh, internet connection uh, security because she said that they were getting hits from Russia on it. Oh. And I had been doing all this Russian stuff. They want to get I on the like, communique. I, yeah. But I would sit there. This was like just writing stuff on Facebook. I'd write stuff about the Russians looking at me, and then I would talk to them. Like I would write little messages to them, like "How are the kids, Yuri?" <laughs> and stuff like that. And I've left. In fact, if you look back, being very well aware that at some point people are going to look back through all my stuff to try to take me down, I have left messages, a trail of messages, for like five years, probably to those people. <laughs> you think the Russians are going to take you down or somebody else? No, 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 no. no. People that would politic disagree with things politically or something like that, wow. you know. Yeah, yeah Russian collusion is <laughs> no there's, good. There's a trend to try to take down big comics by finding stuff they've said in the past, right? Yeah, and that's oh, right, Kevin yeah. Hart with the Oscars Kevin not Hart. too long ago. Exactly, and they did that with, they were trying to do that to Trevor Noah, and they've tried to do it to a bunch of big comics, especially guys who maybe might have a more liberal slant than they'll <coughs> dig through stuff they've done, you know. And, and, and the comics range over subjects and... Time sure, I mean, change, uh, if they look yeah. at Eddie Murphy, I mean, they're not going to find great stuff from uh, the 80s by today's standards. Yeah, yeah, it was like the Andrew Dice Clay era back then, and it was funny to, I mean, it, he Andrew Dice Clay is misunderstood because he was yeah. coming actually from a large, uh, a, a bigger viewpoint of that he was making fun of this thing, but it caught on, and, and right. most of his crowd i don't think was there for that reason you know yeah I, I heard that he really uh he really became the character that he was portraying on stage and then yeah. he kind of said all right this is what's working i'm just gonna have to do this going forward yeah. 
I saw him. What was he in recently? Ah, oh, God, he was so good. It was like the Queen movie or something. Bohemian Rhapsody. I think he's in that. But he, he oh, was really? amazing. I know Louis in that. One of, it may not have been that one, but he was. He's done a lot of, you know, good work acting and stuff like that. So, but the people I know that know him really like him and say he's, you know, just not. Yeah, it, he kind of gets away with it because you know, no one. You can't really go to Andrew Dice Clay and say. Look what this guy said in the uh, in the '90s, late '80s. He's gonna say, "Of course, that's what I said," and he's gonna play right into it. Um, but you know, once these comics start, I guess, apologizing or bending the knee just slightly, that, the apology jump. is the thing that gets me. Like when Kathy Griffin, she posted up a picture of Trump with uh, his head severed with blood. Mm -hmm. coming out of it and i have absolutely no problem with that it was her apology yeah her yeah. crawling to the corporate master apology so she could get her job back which she lost anyway hosting yeah. new year's eve with anderson cooper or whatever she does and on her that same fashion police on that same note i really wanted to get your perspective on the recent apu controversy you know the I, well i don't know about it so fill me in yeah okay i'll fill you in so the idea is that uh, apu on the simpsons is an indian american character who was voiced by a white man and there's a big controversy they made a whole documentary about how it's uh, offensive that this character exists and it it has really tormented uh, uh, young indian people for the last you know 30 years so th they've actually decided to remove Apu's character from The Simpsons insofar as he no longer gets any voice lines. And I wanted to ask you your take on it, because if King of the Hill was still on the air, I think it might potentially face similar issues with a character like Khan, for example. Yeah, yeah, Khan. Yeah. Yeah, T Toby Huss is white, and he voiced Khan, right? right. Yeah, do you... And R Rusty and I have talked a lot about this, and we think it's all bullshit and that everything is fine. So I wanted to know, as a guy who's in the industry, uh, what's your take on it? Well, I mean, I can, you can see both sides, right? right? I mean, it's such a, but it's, it's, a, it's a joke. Yeah. That's my take. Yeah. It's in a comedy show. And what they do is they hire, they'll have like, on, and the same, The Simpsons, we used, we, Greg Daniels came over from The Simpsons to run King of the Hill when it started. Right. So it's the same model. You got like six or seven of your main characters and the, they are often assigned to play a side character because they're always going to be there, right? So Hank Azaria does a poo. And... For years, a beloved character, and if you look back, they paid a lot of respect to yeah. his culture right, and everything yeah. else. I think that's what the documentary missed out, was that the Apu character is one of the most well-rounded, respected characters in all of yeah, Springfield. He, he's not yeah, a, a so mockery. The, so the trick is, and we did the same thing with King of the Hill, is those are the characters that you protect uh, in a certain way, right? So you'll show the Super News phone and, or you'll show different episodes where Bobby got into the into Asian religion or whatever. I mean, however you do it, but you just... <sighs> so yeah. I was thinking like... It, it, but for the... Hank, Hank Azaria, I would think, uh, is completely... I, I would hate to be in his position because he is blameless in the entire mess. Right. I, I right. agree. Uh, and so, but it's like, if the uh, people, Hindu or, or people from India or whatever, stop working at the 7-Eleven! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, stop fitting into the stereotype so well. And don't... Send me letters about that. I mean, that's a joke, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so when when Toby Huss although I would mean, go into better, the studio, there are better jobs. Uh, when Toby goes into the studio, is he in the studio with uh, the voice actress that plays Min? And one of them is yeah. is actually doing like you know she's Asian, and then there's like this uh, white guy right next to her, and he's just like doing his best uh, Laotian uh, accent. That's yeah. got to be a little strange, maybe for him yeah. or for both of them. Well, when it, usually the actors would all be there when we recorded this stuff. Okay. Uh, oh, not cool. always. I mean, um, I never met Janine Garofalo, and she played Bill's girlfriend in an episode. Oh, right? okay. Yeah, uh, that that what... was recorded in New York. But usually the actors would come in, even for the table reads. We'd have a table read, like, on Friday, and then we'd record on Wednesday. So there might be a little rewrite in between there. Um uh, I got lost a little bit. What were we talking about again? 
Oh no! I mean, I'm I'm just interested in listening about this whole process. I yeah, mean, uh, voice action. I, I had I had a point that I was getting uh, to, but uh. Uh, something about um, uh, Toby Huss and the voice actress of Men being recording in the same studio. One of them being white, yeah, and one of them yeah, actually exactly. being Asian. To Toby, <laughs> but he actually. So we're all. They have all these microphones back there, right? One for each actor. Mm -hmm. And so. Toby's, though, was different because it had a sound wall up <laughs> next to it. <laughs> On either side, they had to erect that they had to bring out these big sound wall, these, they're like uh, plexiglass screens or something, because his grandpa cotton would bleed into the other people's. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the only time it ever happened. <laughs> So he didn't have to look her in the eyes as he essentially yeah. did a, uh, a voice of, of her people. <laughs> Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. But I mean, like, when we had, uh, I wrote an episode where Bobby was uh, had, was emulating this black comic where we got a black, we got Chris Rock to do that. That's we right. do not to have Mike Judge do that or something like that, you know. Right. I mean, it's just, it's a tricky area, I guess, but I think it's, that's another one of those things that gets overdone where people get all crazy if there's not, I thought yeah. it was a drug really well in uh tropic thunder robert downey jr that was character. the last <laughs> movie that was able to do it that they, they got away with everything that would have been destroyed and picked apart and had that movie uh yeah. be removed and, from, it's, from and it's a commentary on it at the same time that's hilarious right know? right it's actually funny and yeah. so it's so essentially if to say that you can never for instance do blackface would be the wrong thing to say because you can do it in Tropic Thunder and you don't hear people complaining about that because it worked in the, the well, final product. Rusty, was I think brilliant. what we need is for you to do blackface. Please show us the right way well, to do it. Well, see, so I was thinking about <laughs> recreating some uh, some old Al Jolson clips. <laughs> no. but after of... you, monkey, after you. No, yeah, no, Rusty, yeah, yeah. Rusty sounds really passionate about doing blackface. I'll let him do it. Well, instead of blackface, hey, I'll, I'll use. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was John Redcorn voiced by a white guy too? No, he was voiced by a Native American both oh, okay. times. Oh. Where'd you find him at? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> oh, I don't know where you get Native Americans. <laughs> well, the, there's two John Redcorns. The first guy, actually, after a couple of years, Victor Aaron, he was this big, tall Indian guy, and uh, he. Um, just it was horrible he had died in a car wreck on Mulholland. and oh god yeah, it was horrible i didn't know that the voice actor changed yeah they replaced him with jonathan jobs who wasn't quite as tall but an indian okay okay he has, he has a john redcorn band he travels around in uh that he's been doing ever since then i saw that yeah i saw it. i meant to look into it. the john it redcorn band. johnny and the redcorns no, I think it's called. What is it? It's really funny. It's the. Uh, you have to look. Google it. Google it. <laughs> I'm looking into this. The John Redcorn. <laughs> or no, the one uh, Mountain Fudge Cake was. Yeah, the, yeah, Big Mountain band. Fudge Cake. Yeah, I don't know if he's using that or not. That's funny, but it's. It, I haven't seen it. It's supposed to be great, and uh, you know, he lived on a boat. In the marina. Okay. So he was really cool. I, I liked him. Did he drive his boat to work every day? <laughs> okay. Johnny, yeah. Johnny Hardwick, I'm going to hit you with the biggest question of the night. He took his canoe to the work up the canal. <laughs> he had to, That's a real Indian. He had to row his yeah, canoe yeah, uphill both just ways. An actual Native American. Okay, here's the, India. Here's the big question. Everybody's on the edge of their seat. They want to know. As far as you know, are there any planned revivals of King of the Hill? Ooh, good question. <laughs> a reboot? Anything. Are we going to see a movie? We're going to see another season? Anything at all? People are dying I, to see I'll more. Tell you, I will tell you, I would prefer to see a movie. And now, I'll are you waiting by your phone? Write it. I'll be happy to write it. I got to... I wrote one, uh, well, I got the pitch out. Um, it's called uh, Never Trust Nobody. And it's uh, Dale, is a, the first scene is, is President Trump's inauguration, and you see it on the screen, and then it pulls back, and you see you're in, this, in the Kremlin in headquarters, and, uh, and Putin turns around, and he goes, good work, comrade. And you see Dale in a Russian <laughs> outfit. 
<laughs> and he goes, thank you. And that's the beginning of the movie. And you find out that he was a Russian spy the whole time. And then they look into the voice actor and they find a correspondence with Russia <laughs> going back over five years. Does the film end with Hank threatening to kick Putin's ass? Yeah, I like yeah that's that. what we need. Okay, you can say it, Monkey. Go ahead. I know you've been waiting. Oh, no, I'm not even going to try to do my uh, Hank Hill impression. I, I decided to to drop that before the show. Okay, all right, because he wanted to, to <laughs> I wanted to say, Dale, I'm going to kick your ass. That's the best I could do. Well, I suck at it. Damn thing you didn't, didn't say it. Yeah, thank I God I didn't was, say it. That was a good decision. That yeah. would have been embarrassing. <laughs> oh, that's good. In fact, uh, I... I've watched your videos and you do a, you do a, a lot of really good stuff. I mean, kind of like a Seth MacFarlane stuff I've seen, and uh, but better. Yeah. Uh, Have you uh, like you've probably you met are. Seth MacFarlane because you guys were the the whole Fox lineup for uh, over was, a decade. Yes, I was there at the beginning of that show, and I was good friends with him. I used to hang out in his office all the time, and uh, whenever there was, uh, they would have these press parties. Uh, Fox at the beginning of every year for all the new shows and so all the actors would be there from all the new shows and there was all these press people and all of this stuff in the Pasadena Hilton or somewhere and uh, I would always hang out with Seth over in the corner and we'd sit there and talk about nerds. Now does he does he pick up your calls still? Yeah when are you going to go on the Orville? I haven't talked to him about it. <laughs> I don't want to get into the Orville because I'm such a Star Trek fan and such a Seth Farland and McFan that I'd rather not comment. <laughs> oh, 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 comment. Maybe. Uh... Well, it said, on the, it said, I'll just say it said on my uh, guide, it said a com it was listed as a comedy. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. That, it's a raving review, it sounds like. Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure what they're going for, except to employ people from that Hollywood makeup show, contest show. <laughs> they do good work. So, I'm actually not familiar with this show. But oh, Seth's a great guy. I actually, I loved his Western. Did you see that? Uh, yeah, remember. A Million Ways to Die in the West. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. He did a great job, and he plays the lead character like a Woody Allen s kind of turn. You know, I think he's he's really great. But I just don't get the Orville. Yeah, maybe maybe it's for the Zoomer generation. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a boomer. Yeah. Like, oh, hey, Mysterion. Thank you, Mysterios. <laughs> Mysterios. <laughs> Uh, so, so, so officially, there Jeffrey. there is no King of the Hill revival in the works, but you are ready with pen and paper to no, write the I movie. Didn't, I didn't say that. Oh, I oh. never actually got to that. Ooh, is there anything to get to? Okay, I'll be able to say one thing here that I shouldn't be saying. Probably nobody, uh, no, Judge, nobody's watching. Nobody, yeah, there's, there's... Probably nobody knows this. Mike Judge and, and Greg Daniels have formed an animation development company together, which may be called Pocket Sand. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, that's Greg. That's what Greg wanted. Um, anyway, uh, they uh, uh, as far as the King of Hill reboot, if it was going to happen, it might happen. Uh, it would be under a different name. Really? It would, it, due to contractual things. Mm, and right, uh, right, right. Well, what, about, what about the Good I, Family? Will we get a I Good Family it. reboot? Yeah, 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 I like that. That was <laughs> So maybe something similar, but not the exact same thing, but uh, something that has well, the same no, feel then. It can't be under that name, and I gave him a perfect name, and, uh, you know, so when I talked to Mike, he was drunk. So. I mean, no, he wasn't drunk. <laughs> Sorry, he doesn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it had, like, two beers. So, uh, sure, sure. Yeah, but I do. told him the Dale Gribble Show, that's an alternate title. All right, so, so you still have uh, rights over all the characters. Yeah, you can then. use the characters then. I think Fox might have rights. I'm sure that it must be Mike's and Greg's, but probably with Fox, right? Right. So, if right. Fox isn't doing anything with the property, why wouldn't they just give it back? It's an independent animation company that will sell their wares to whoever they feel like. Nice. Is my my understanding. That's all I'm going to say about that because I don't think it's been. I don't even know if it's been announced. Now, how did you actually get started on the show? And I, I'm sure there might be other things you want to talk about besides just King of the Hill, but. I've been interested. Like, how did you get involved with the show initially? Oh, I was doing stand-up, and uh, 
there was my manager had called me uh it was uh colleen mcgar and duncan strauss they were uh they used to be bill hicks's manager oh, okay. people and uh i can tell you a lot about that too um about bill hicks. but uh <laughs> he, he uh they didn't kill him, did they? <laughs> He's not Alex Jones, I'll tell you that. Okay, all right, all right. Official proof. Yeah. He, uh, but they had, they said there was going to be a, a showcase at the improv, and I was doing stand up. I'd done like, did Montreal Comedy Festival and stuff like that. And I was just mm-hmm. getting good. I did the John, the original John Stewart show on MTV. I was the, First comic they ever had on it. I'm going to have to check that out. There's footage. I think that was pre that thing. Uh, But uh, anyway, I was was doing stand up and I Mm -hmm. went out. Yeah. And I went, "Ah, I I can't even afford to get out there. And so they paid my ticket and I came out to do a showcase at the improv. And Greg Daniels happened to be there scouting out writers or or voices or entertainers for his show that he was developing with Mike Judge, King of the Hill. Okay. Yeah, and my opening bit, I think, was like I was talking about my dad. I was like, we were born in Houston, and uh, you always had to keep the front door closed, or I'd let the air conditioning out. You're letting out all the air conditioning. What are you trying to do, air condition the entire state of Texas? You know, <laughs> awesome. Like some guy going to come on the news. Well, the big 90-day heat wave finally ended. You can see the cold front starting right here at Johnny Hardwick's front door. <laughs> and, you know, it was just this bit. But how Hank Hill is that for – him to be working on King of the Hill, and I just happened to show up because my managers paid for my airplane ticket. Yeah, so and, so are these characters I mean, kind of based are, yeah, around you? My, no, no. Okay. Mike had already Mark had, Mike, Mike had already uh, had the character going and had drawn it out and everything. But I, I hope I was one of the first writers. They hired me as a writer first, and then there's a whole story where I. Daniel Stern was cast uh, as uh, who was uh, you remember from Breaking Away, and he was the voiceover for Wonder Years uh, oh. a while back. <laughs> okay, that wasn't he was Fred he was hired as Dale, and he got into a contractual dispute over money. Mm. And in the meanwhile, I had auditioned, but I went back. I was I had been listening to this. Um, uh, I'd been listening to some stuff uh, that reminded me of Dale Moore, and I, I, uh, who was it? William Burroughs. I was listening to this William Burroughs, Ken Jardine thing, and I was like, that's Dale. So I was trying to do kind of that. And I okay. went back into audition after Daniel Stern turned it down, and they gave it to me. So, <laughs> My God, can you imagine and, if Daniel Stern got the role? Would he just be doing his, his Wonder Years voice? I, got, I was in on the initial, a lot of the... Uh, I saw a bunch of people audition for the different parts. Uh, William Macy as Bill Dotree. Okay. Oh, wow, wow. Okay. I that was that. cool. Yeah, that was interesting. He uh, was completely unable to remember lines. So, oh. I mean, just absolutely just could not for the life of him. I got it. And aren't you reading off a piece of paper anyways? <laughs> or is yeah. It, is it better not to? Thing. Is it like That's you really want to get into it? Well, sometimes when people audition, usually they'll try to memorize something, I think. Okay. But uh, for this, that just is completely unnecessary because it's all, it's you, it's red. I mean, you know, that's why actors love doing it. Like we had all these guest actors on King of the Hill all the time. Mm-hmm. And Brad, it's like about this tall. And, uh, <laughs> and we would have these guys on all, he played Boom uh, brother. We, but we had these people on all the time and they, um, they loved it because they didn't have to put on makeup. They didn't have to memorize their lines. That's it why I loved like a it. Great job. Yeah, uh, I mean, I did it the whole time, and I was completely anonymous walking around, and still am. And that that's been just it meant so much to me, you know. Do you have any? Well, now it's uh, not going to be like that anymore. People are going to be hitting you up on the street after these. Yeah, I'm kind of over that now, so I don't yeah. really care. Like uh, I've gotten to an age and had enough sh- shit happen to me that I'm just having fun now. So I saw I saw a video clip of uh, you at I think it was a golf course and someone had come up and they wanted you to do like the Dale Gribble impression. 
And I was wondering if that was if that's really annoying when people ask you if they come up to you constantly or if that ever really happens. No, no, because they don't come up to me constantly and do that because they don't know. So that was uh, that was great. That's the Friday Night Lights. Um, it's it's a local celebrity golf tournament that my friend Brad Williams put together with Kyle, the, the guy that played the coach over there. And they're just oh, the okay. greatest guys. And they, they hadn't put it on in a few years, but it was for high school athletes with spinal injuries. And there was this golf tournament. And so I they had a disc golf tournament. And I said, can I take over the disc golf tournament? Because I'm really into disc golf. And I said, can we make it the Rusty Shackleford of the Dale Gribble disc golf tournament. And they said, yes. So we did that that year. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah. So I was going around and someone asked me, so they knew who I was then. So right. I, they asked me to do that little thing. It wasn't very good. I'm still rusty a little bit on the voice and I keep slipping. Mm -hmm. That's why it's good to be doing this. I keep slipping into having it be too virile or something but johnny rambler kind of like it's well I, I would think that it's people good to practice would... it and if there is some kind of reboot i don't want to mess it up oh yeah well I, I feel like it's it's still there underlying and clear i would imagine you might be talking to someone uh just out in public and someone say hey you sound like uh dale gribble from king of the <laughs> I, Day. i've had had that happen a few times but it's usually when they kind of like you know and I don't, I, I just avoid it so much. It's funny that I just don't ever mention it. But if somebody will be like, if I'm, if I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt and I've got this. Oh, okay. awesome. To, nice. um, and they say something about it. I'll ask them if they're a fan of the show. If they say yes, I'll give them a little deal or something like that. You know, I'm, I'm not at all. I haven't had enough of people. I'm not even in the league to have to be bothered by that kind of stuff. And now I get a huge kick out of it. So sure, I'm sure. reading the comments there that are just great. You know, when's the last time you did the voice of the the loudspeaker announcer man? Because I it's I I think that was you, right? Whenever they go to Prob an event, yeah, yeah, probably when I did it. <laughs> yeah, it's like so high pitched. I don't know how you could hold it. It says, yeah, it was like, and I've been coming down here. I think Charlie Macon's got the ball. Uh, I was going to ask Char you. Charlie Macon loves that joke, by the way. He's uh, uh, the Macon brothers were friends of mine. As, I, w I would stick names uh, of people I knew as a child in all my episodes, like the ballad of Kane Scredderberg, the paintball episode where Green Day. That's, a that's whole, hilarious. That's a whole story hanging out with Green Day all day. <laughs> In yeah, the studio. Um, but uh, once again, I lost the point. We were talking about uh, the them being in the paintball episode. It, how you Hang would throw out your friends' uh, names in there. Say again? You, you said you would throw like your childhood friends' names into episodes randomly. Yeah, the ballad, it's called The Ballad of, yes, yeah, thank you, The Ballad of Kane Scredderberg. And I grew up with a guy named Eric Scredderberg, and that's where I got Scredderberg from. And I would just <laughs> litter it with stuff like that. The Hills live at 84 Rainy Street, right? It, a fan will know that. Um, that was my address in Austin before oh, I did wow. King. Oh, wow. I, 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 I lived on Rainy Street, which has turned into this just circus atmosphere this street used to be a couple of blocks going from downtown to the river that nobody knew about and it was all old rental houses like this house i lived in from 1910 two bedroom house with joey walden for like five years before i took off to go to king of the hill 84 rainy street and now every one of these houses have been turned into some kind of crazy Zoomer bar. <laughs> and, and they built these, they torn some down and built these 35 story condos. And there's literally fake grass out in front Ooh. of them. And it's, it, and there's ATM machines on the sidewalk and fake grass as you walk down. And, uh, and the only house that I see there that someone's still actually living in is 84 Rainy Street, all fixed up, looking nice. And it's next door to these food, food sure. trucks that people, that's known as Needle Alley. Okay, so. Oh, Jesus. But, so, uh, but did you raise the property value or did that, did that help to ruin it? That property value is through the roof, and Oof. that's the last holdout. There's there's one other guy that's holdout that lives in this house that's slanted like this, and they're trying to get him out of it. Sounds that's like awesome. you need to start a Kickstarter it's, to save the Hill House. 
Yeah, every night on th this is uh, this it gets completely packed with people and there's clubs and music and everything else on that street now. And, and, and a lot of people having fun and, and uh, getting crazy. And it's, it's, it's just nothing like it was before. It's interesting, but that's part of sort of the new Austin. I haven't been to Austin yet. And I'm, I'm not sure if, uh, if I want to go, people say it's a lot like the, the city that I currently live in, but a bigger version. Where do you currently live? Sorry. I didn't hear. It really it's, uh, I'm sure I've already oh, talked myself. in North Carolina, I know, right? Yeah. Russ is uh, in Gainesville. Gainesville, Gainesville okay. Florida. You're so, in Gainesville? Yeah, yeah. And Tom people always Petty. say Austin. Tom Petty! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's dead now. You don't have to. No one talks about him anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's fixed it to drop an album that's pretty good for dead guy. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Shit, was it Mud Crutch? Did you have uh, yeah. an interesting interaction with Green Day that you wanted to talk about? Oh, I was just saying that's a whole other story. We were in there. We go to their studio, and they're going to play these guys in the band. I had initially, when I wrote it, I put Beck in the script, and I was trying to get him to get Beck. And they go, who's Beck? Oh. And I go, he's this guy. He's real high. Well, this is years ago. Okay. You weren't even a boomer sorry. back but, then. But, but, but you should have known who he was by then. But they go, no. They, but then they get Green Day. Even better, right? right. So um, we go in to record it, and we had written these songs like, my baloney has a first name, it's H-I-T-L-E-R! And I still, <laughs> I still get like six cent ASCAP checks because of that. <laughs> yeah. I swear, I've got some frame. And uh, <laughs> I had to join for ASCAP Hitler. for writing that and a couple other things, or I don't even know if I wrote that, you know? It might have been one of the other writers because it's a team effort. But uh, we went in their, their studio, uh, which, are, you know, that was like a recording area with the stage, and it was their hangout, right? And there's like a five-foot bong sitting on the stage next to the drum kit and everything. And, uh, You're not telling me those guys smoke drugs, are you? <laughs> Somebody left it there, I'm sure. <laughs> it was a mistake. In by it. it couldn't have walked in by itself, though, I'm sure. <laughs> But the Who's... three guys, the three guys in the band, um, played Billy Joe and Trey and uh, the other guy. The other guy. Wait, anyway, yeah, they. Uh, um, second, but they they played different instruments for this. That was what was cool for. Like Billy Joe played the drums, and uh, the guitar player played the bass. Or not the Billy Joe's the guitar player, but they switched instruments. So anything okay. you hear, they're they're practicing in the garage all the time and stuff. And Hank's unplugging it. That's them playing, but on different instruments. So because they wanted to deliberately sound kind of amateurish, but the, you know they were still okay. But <laughs> now, Rusty, this might surprise funny. you, but according to the chat, Green Day is actually named after weed. So well, oh okay, yeah, there oh, you go. Shit. That's according to Billy Joe the Hedgehog in the chat. Billy Joe is well, listening in right now. This is, this is his actual profile, I see. <laughs> so if you were to say get up and wake and bake, then you would have a green day. That's right. Okay. Ah, see, see, this, is, this drug culture, it's all just so new for me. <laughs> I, I just started smoking weed. Uh, I'm, I'm almost 30, and so I just started smoking weed. Um, <laughs> it's a boomer and, drug. Yeah, so I'm getting used to it. Is uh, it? It's not legal in Florida. Oh uh, no, I mean I go I go to, out of the state to do that. <laughs> I don't know what the laws are. The people, nobody in Florida is getting high. Yeah, 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 right. I abide by the laws. Who was the coolest per, uh, celebrity? I guess that came on the show. Or oh, the Eric, least cool. Eric Estrada, I'd have to say. Okay. Yeah, and then the least cool. He was he was sitting there. Uh, he comes up to me after we had been uh, 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 sitting in the green room a while, and he shows me his script, and he has drawn some Dale Gribble characters himself on there, <laughs> scrawled on there. Were they and, any uh, good? They were okay. I thought it was funny, <laughs> and okay. and he said I was his favorite character. Then. A couple months later, I'm going down Ventura Boulevard. I come up to a light, er, and there's a big truck to, next to me, and Eric Estrada is in it, my friend from King of the Hill, right? So I, I lower the window, and he's right over here in his truck, and I go, lower your window, and he lowers the window down, and I go, Eric, it's me! And he <laughs> 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 
I'm going pocket say <laughs> everywhere you go. Problem you always have me, to have your pocket. With me going pocket sand is they just they don't they go they never would assume it was actually me. <laughs> Yeah, that's, is, that's, uh, that's... you can get this at a couple of different places on Etsy and First Line Survival. Oh the, shit! The, the Waco kid sent me a bunch of that stuff. Oh, well, that's awesome! I I gotta get myself some pocket sand. Yeah, there's uh, he sent me this wooden dugout, wow. and uh, it's got Hank on the back, and there's a Bobby Grinder. It says that's my purse. I don't know you, and he <laughs> sells some stuff like that. Classic episode. Um, I'm gonna get. I'm fixing to get some pins in from this guy Mauricio. Who does these really cool ceramic pins? He's got a King of the Hill lineup. He's gonna send me. So nice. Mm. Are, so are you? Uh, are these just like fans doing this, or people that connect with you that you're working with? Well, the Waco Kid thing just came after I, after this whole deal started. It came a few days later, and he had just sent it to me, and then okay. I saw commenting in my video after that too so uh but it, first line survival he's the one that sent me this <laughs> liberal tears <Perfect>. <laughs> liberal <laughs> tears squeezed from 100 percent pure but hurt left rusty he's drinking your tears how does that feel oh yeah yeah because i'm a big liberal <laughs> and you keep crying all the time I do cry I, quite I, often i can tell you guys are snowflakes at heart <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm melting I, I, Mom key. I watched your top 10 anime and I saw the Hillary thing. And that was just love right there. <laughs> oh, uh, is that the one that had I, Hank Hill I, in it? We share the same thing about Hillary. I knew she was unelectable, <laughs> you know? So I was like, you know, it was just the whole thing was frustrating for me. I told everybody when they go, how did you vote? And I'd go, I voted uh, anti-Trump. I never said I voted for Hillary. Did you see my sure. anime review where I uh, dissect Hank Hill's character? No, uh, no. I will watch that. Yeah, I'll send you that one next. Unless you want to put it on live and I'll uh, I'll uh, give my comments. Uh, I would definitely <laughs> fuck that up, so I don't think we should. We can, uh, we can do that on another show. Yeah. Uh, I did have one really long-winded question about the production of the show, if you will uh, engage okay. me. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> Okay. You're looking good. Not bad for 60. No, no. Shit. I wouldn't put you a day over 25. <laughs> I wouldn't put you a day over 11. <laughs> You're not wrong. More handsome Fred Savage. Here's another <laughs> tattoo. This one was done More by handsome. <laughs> Jack Ryan. No relation over at Southside. This one. Wait a minute. It's on the other that one never trust nobody <laughs> perfect did a good job on that all right i'll try to uh spit out my thoughts as cleanly as i can but this is a tough one i got there oh yes oof peach Okay, so my question you is: Pete Townsend invented breaking the guitar. No, his wife invented it. Pete, stop! <laughs> stop that! Give me that! Didn't he kill his wife? Oh, whoa! Did he with no, the guitar? <laughs> it just seems like something that that could be believable. Well, now it's now that you've said it, it's true. It's out there. Yeah. This this is the internet. Pete Townsend may or may not have killed his wife. We will have to Google that after the show, but for now, I want it to be a Schrodinger's cat sort of thing where we don't know for sure. Oh, that bullshit. Oh, uh, you're not a big fan of Schrodinger? No! <laughs> no! Here, let me tell you. that. Okay, there's a box, right? And there's a cat in it, and he's either dead or alive, right? But you don't know. It, and there's the... a nuclear counter or something. Well, patience! This is where we learn patience. Within a week, you will know if the cat is alive or dead by the smell. True. As right. Within a few days, probably. Well, it's the ultimate pseudo-intellectual circle jerk question is the Schrodinger's box. If, if somebody brings that up in conversation, you know that they like to spend their days on Reddit and probably well, watching I, I, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I think it's a metaphor for quantum physics, monkey. 
about yeah. the uh, yeah. the way yeah. quantum the particles Heis react. Heisenberg principle, where yeah. your observation by a human changes the results of the experiment. Exactly. Maybe, this is maybe I'm a pseudo intellectual here. Maybe I'm just a big dummy. Light, the speed of light between your eye and the experiment itself throws it off. Okay. By the time you see it, it's not where you think you're seeing it. It's moved on. Right. Try looking at a star that's nine light years away. You're looking at it, but it's somewhere else by the time you see it. I it's tried looking at the out. sun. Same and, uh, thing on the macro level. They're just at such small things that humans can't grasp it. But I can. Rusty, okay. do you look at the sun a lot? Called uh, expansion theory. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I stare at the sun quite a bit because I feel like it's going to make my eyes better. You know, like what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Um, and so I'm kind of toughening up, <laughs> toughening up my corneas by just little bits at a time, a right. minute here, two minutes there. That's why you're wearing glasses right now. Yes, I just started <laughs> wearing glasses. Okay. I like the glasses. It, okay, it, monkey. Yeah, here's my long-winded question nobody will find interesting but me. Uh, King of the Hill, some of its contemporaries were shows like The Simpsons and Family Guy. And I think King of the Hill was unique in the sense that it actually had a progression of time. Bart Simpson, he's been 10 from episode one. He's 10 in the last episode. But uh, Dale, are, all the characters age in King of the Hill uh, ever so slowly. Uh, Joseph even changes his voice actor when he goes through puberty. So my question was, if the show takes place in such a specific time and the characters are actually progressing and changing, and we have season-long character arcs uh, uh, occasionally, how did you guys rectify this when it's suddenly 2008 and you want to stay true to the characters, but like, w did the show still take place in 1998 in your minds? Or how did you guys, did you even talk about that at all? Or am I just thinking it where, too hard? Two, where did 2008 come into this long-winded? Well, like, so long -winded when, you're, when you're on season 12 of the show, how do you keep the characters consistent when perhaps... Uh, yeah. Oh, Hank right. can no longer be born the year he was born. Yeah, and they've only aged a year or so, but they're talking about stuff that uh, is the, like computers and things that didn't right. exist when the show started. Was that a concern at all, or was it just, you know, it's a cartoon? Apparently, and not, not. Apparently okay. not. Okay. I, I didn't know if that was – because King of the Hill actually aged the characters, and something like The Simpsons never does, so I wondered if that was like a, a thing you talked about behind the scenes. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, there was a decision to age them at some point and stuff like that, to just slowly, you know, because you don't want to lose your... That's why a lot of uh, male characters like Bart and and Bobby Hill were played by women because their voice wasn't about to change, right? Right. right. Yeah, so... Um, and uh, Pamela Adler, I think that's her last name. Pam Adlon. Adlon, yeah. What a great voice actress. I, I don't know how someone can do... It, and it's and, weird hearing the voice of Bobby Hill and then uh, seeing the actress. And it's just like... Oh, yeah. She's a cutie, definitely. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even for her uh, her young age now. Yes. I would, I'd still do it. If, uh, <laughs> if she's watching, very, hit me up. Come on, Rush. She's very talented, and she has her own show, and that she was that she developed with Louis C.K. Right, right. And that is a very sore subject <laughs> with Pam now that that happened, because you know Louis's normally a nice guy, and Pam never saw that 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 side of him. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe. Let's hope not. He had a brilliant line coming back, but he ruined it after that. But he just walks in and said, I like masturbating and I don't like being alone. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, right? And then he started talking about the, I don't know, about people that were killed. Yeah, the school shooting life. kids. Yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, you got shafted. Uh, Mumkey, uh, if people don't know, he lost his YouTube channel. Uh, for hate speech against a school shooter. Yeah. Hate speech yeah. against dangerous incels. They're a protected class yeah. now. Yes. E.R. were his initials, I believe. Elliot and Roger, that's right. Yes, Even those were his initials. Yes, Elliot Roger. And uh, yeah, I thought it, it was, what you did was, was really interesting. And people, it's the same thing with like, 9-11, there's actually a manifesto that was written by Al-Qaeda for that, but how many people have actually <laughs> read it? You I know? didn't even know there was one, so probably... 
it also allows, it allows people here to go they're they're jealous of how wonderful everything is mm-hmm. here you know instead of looking at okay well what were your gripes that you drove these planes into or whatever right but if if it happened rusty how's your yeah, manifesto coming along landing. oh my manifesto uh, i i'm <sighs> I just have to, you know, chapter one is the hardest chapter. <laughs> right. Uh, you but once I get really into it. Really put your mission statement in there. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> exactly. I got to sum up uh, the entire manifesto in, in one paragraph just to catch <laughs> their you, attention first. Is this in preparation for some uh, in some kind of ending thing that you're going to do? Some kind uh, of. PG- I don't know yet. Can I, I figured it out? out. He's going to go protest at Fox until they bring back King of the Hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's exactly gonna... and the more subscribers i get the bigger chance of that actually happening hey, that's yeah. everybody go subscribe right now that's that's my yeah, imagine you... dictation and there's a, now if you want to talk about the reboot um in yeah. in the theoretical terms because there's a, a you know and i i have the same feeling i, I went and had lunch with jim dotry mm-hmm. who uh has the same name as Bill Dotree because he was a writer on King of the Hill and he's on Bob's Burgers now. He helped create that show. And he said that, uh, he goes, oh, I, he goes, I have such mixed feeling. I was talking to him because I had pitched the Dale Gribble spinoff a couple of years ago to Greg. And he said, well, we're working on, uh, Mike wanted to work on Monsignor Martinez as the spinoff. So we maybe we'll get to that later. Yeah, I, saw, uh, I understood that because Monsignor Martinez is a huge internet presence and their memes are everywhere and he was right about everything. I saw... He was like a side character that Peggy watched on, uh, and he was hilarious, but it was a priest who killed people with guns and I was like, I don't know if this is going to fly in the current environment. He was so, voiced by Mike Judge too, wasn't he? No, he was voiced by Antonio Banderas. In all the episodes? Because I... Oh, I could have sworn one. I heard Mike Judge's voice coming out of. He might have, yeah. He might have done the first one, yeah. yeah. I definitely know that they did an episode with it, and it was Antonio Banderas. <laughs> I was going to ask. I saw. Who a... Also has problems reading lines. Oof. <laughs> it all comes out on the Monkey Jones. He has an show. excuse. Uh, I saw a YouTube comment where you said that somebody asked you if Joseph Gribble was a Monkey Jones fan, and you said that he died in Afghanistan. So I was curious, <laughs> as a writer on the show, where would all the characters be if they aged naturally into the year 2019? Oh, good question. Well, we talked about uh, when I had pitched Greg the uh, um, the Dale Gribble spinoff, he said, uh, he said that... Uh, It'd be interesting if the characters because were eight years older, and so yeah, we came I up, love that. Yeah, well, I came up with a plot where he moves to Austin because Nancy gets a job at the news station, basically, so we could make fun of all the new stuff going on in Austin and the Eye on Austin report with Nancy Gribble, and then Dale goes on the Alex Jones show, and somehow, <laughs> somehow Alex dies, and Dale takes over the rest of the show, and then he starts to get recognition and has a radio show and becomes mayor and then governor of texas and i have this whole <laughs> wow. i would imagine alex would be down Art. to uh come in as a voice actor for that <laughs> he would actually. yeah yeah <laughs> he's uh uh well he's uh was real good friends with my friend uh, my best friend kevin booth probably uh he lives out in fredericksburg now thank god and he uh, he's real good friends with Alex for years, and now Alex will not talk to him. He Ooh. said, like, as of a year or two ago, he said Alex just became this other person when he started, you know, when he became big and Trump started mentioning him and everything. Oh, uh, shit, he got, he got went a bit of an ego. over the deep end. <laughs> yeah, I heard he was kind of going down the rabbit hole. Uh, as, yeah, as people because he wasn't, to doing, yeah, he wasn't doing that off stage back then, but, you know, now that's just it. It's like with the Andrew Dice Clay, yeah. there's a point where you gain so much power, and that's what I'm trying to avoid. That's why I'm not on here raving the whole time as... <laughs> Rusty, I don't know, the, the, the first 30 minutes. <laughs> I'll do it. I was for the fans who I love. Yeah. I love you all. Well, Rusty, did you have any more hard hitting <laughs> questions or should we just uh, just keep going with anything? Because I, I got all the questions out that I really wanted to tackle. No, I, I actually don't have anything to ask. This was very, very interesting. 
Yeah, I've been uh, having a lot of fun. Uh, Johnny Hardwick, if you have anything else you want to talk about, I'd love to. What was it that I asked you to ask me about? I can't remember. Oh, a book. It. A book that inspired King of the Hill. Yeah, it was called, uh, Greg Daniels gave all the writers when we started a book called The Death of Common Sense, and it's a great book, but it's like, you see it happening every day now, it's, it's just kind of a standard thing where you run in, and that's what King of the Hill, if you look back through it, was heavily influenced by that, it's the run in with bureaucracy, and because of those rules, you end up with people in prison that shouldn't be in prison or just whatever, you know, just all these crazy things that are happening. And it's just because people play by the rules and have no common sense, you know, like right. the, kid the other day that was telling the Pledge of Allegiance and got arrested and he's 10 years old because he was because Colin Kaepernick was his fan and he said he wasn't going to do the, you know, and so his, his teacher has someone come in and the next thing you know, the police are there and this keeps happening, you know, and that's, sure. the death, that's the death of common sense. And so it's just as much that let me talk just real quick. I'm working on this animated spaghetti Western with my partner, Scott St. Louis and Randy Kubizak, the animator. So look that up. There's a promo and it's uh, set 10 years in the future, which is a lot of fun. And it's a rock and roll, uh, it's it's a rock and roll musical kind of spaghetti western World War Three thing. It starts. It's ten years in the future, and it starts at this uh, talent show called "So You Want to Be President of the United States? Are You Fucking Crazy?" Show. <laughs> so by then, ten years in the fu our future, um, the uh, elections are held instantly by phone in this talent contest. A new president every year, so everything's real messed up by the okay. time there yeah and it's it's gonna be really fun but it's a rock band uh are you doing the music for it? It. yeah well scott st louis is the music guy i'll be participating there's a real band called the ditch bank over keys from clovis california that are doing all the music for the band trailer metal in ours and they all look exactly like them so they can tour later as the band perfect is there any and chance uh, of us getting a Rusty Cage, Rusty Shackleford uh, uh, collaboration song one of these days? Sure, I'd love to. Absolutely. Do you have songs up, Mumkey? Because I saw Rusty Cage. No, I'm not a music guy. I just steal Rusty's music and put it in my videos. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to, Rusty. I think that'd be great. I, oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. I wish you could tell me how to do that split screen where you're playing old, you're over here with the harmonica. <laughs> And it'll it'll take a bit, but I can it, definitely show you. Maybe Rusty can edit it for you for free. He loves doing that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whatever. Minion. But yeah, tell me more about this uh, this animation you're making. It sounds cool. Yeah, it's there's a band. Um, we have a there's uh these two guys that are the twin front man leaders of the band, and it basically follows one of them, Ditch Pirelli. He has a brother, Stitch, and uh, in the in this uh, American President show, this guy, his name's Rich Dick Tater, and he's the governor of uh, Idaho. This potato magnet who used to be a Hollywood guy, and and he uh, there's a whole backstory, but he just goes, "I'm going to start WW3 mic drop," and he wins. <laughs> He wins the news, and he's six foot eight. And I'm trying to get Peter Dinklage to play Peter Peter Dinklage to play him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but he's where will this be available? When when can we see this? Well, we're shopping it right now, so I'm hoping soon. I mean, because the ten years in the future, uh, and it's like it like it's ten years in the future. So like when you see the show, they have these judges like uh, uh, Dennis Rodman and Kim Jong Un or a judge team, and they're like. <laughs> They have these Hollywood cop movies that they've been doing. And Bruce Jenner is one of the judges, and he switched back, and he's got, like, a beard and a cowboy outfit and stuff. Oh, he, he untransitioned. Yeah. Back to Bruce yeah. <laughs> so what you can do, it's beautiful, because we were going to have the King of the Hill characters show up, and they're 10 years older, and although that's under discussion. They might look just the same, but... Mm. Mike Judge is a character in it. He plays himself, and he's this <laughs> Captain Nemo-esque character who lives in this uh, dormant volcano in Montana in this big 
lair with all these, uh, he has all these mistresses and everything, and he's devoted his life to physics and invented this Tesla coil tower thing that everybody's trying to get at. And, but he ends up being our ally uh, when our Wienermobile, which we travel around in, gets exploded, and uh, he recommissions it and puts anti-gravity drive in it and all this, all these secret uh, weapons and stuff. And so we go out fighting the resistance because uh, it starts out with America being occupied all over the place, like China's built a wall across the southern border and paid for it. And uh, <laughs> stuff like that. the Russians have taken over the pot trade and slowly come in. But they were stood off by governor or dictator of Idaho. This sounds got this whole fucking mythical world. Yeah, we have a map fantastic. somewhere. It sounds like but, we're overdue yeah. for you and Mike Judge to uh, direct and write Idiocracy 2. When's that coming out? Oh, I'd love to write that with him. I didn't get a chance. I wasn't asked the first time, but that's my specialty. It's yeah. predicting future with pocket quantum computers. I mean, but, what what even could be the plot of Idiocracy 2? I mean, everybody keeps saying it wasn't meant to be a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> I know, like a pro wrestler is president. How that doesn't <laughs> right, seem. Right. Jesse Ventura actually seems like a good choice at this point. <laughs> And there's uh, people that are say Kanye said, uh, did he tweet 2024? That's right. I'm voting yeah. for him. And they'll get backing, you know, so I'll run oh, yeah. at some point. And the yellow party is Rusty Shackelford. Like uh, back in my day when we watched Laugh-In, there was a really funny guy named Pat Paulson who actually ran for president. And it was hilarious, you know, so I'd do a mock run. Hey, I, you got my vote. You, what if you accidentally won, like the last idea. time somebody did a mock run? <laughs> Say, what's that? What if you accidentally won, just like the last time somebody did a mock presidential run? Well, then we'll see what happens after that. <laughs> Stay tuned! Stay tuned. It's like we're, but isn't it like we're watching a TV show now? I mean, it's no different, and he, mil and, and it's being milked. It's being milked, not he. I don't know who I was talking about. <laughs> It's being milked by the mainstream media mainly, you know, yeah. I mean, because because now you have to have breaking news and it plays into the tweet, you know, right. like, oh, I'll break the news right now, you know, <laughs> anytime I want. It's yeah, weird. It's, it's, I don't know, the whole, the whole thing's crazy. Do you, do you think he really actually sits there and tweets those things or are they sent to him and he copies them, tweets him? Or does Putin just sit there in the Kremlin and do it and it just goes straight through? Like, what is going on? I think with some of the funny typos he's had, I think he is the one doing it because you've got Kofefi and Hamburgers, and those are both just hilarious. So I imagine he was, he was taking a shit and he was on his phone and he, uh, he fucked up and it was funny. Well, the co and the cough beef, that was the one where he said something horrible is happening and cough beef and then that was it. <laughs> yeah. like... Four hours or 18 hours. It's up for like, yeah, we're going, what is this? But I think he might have a stroke. <laughs> How did he what hit send he and then never check to see what he wrote? <laughs> and what was the other that. one? What was the burner was obviously he was thinking of the border and he was writing hamburger and he wrote hamburger. <laughs> I did a whole thing where you make the border wall out of hamburgers. I don't know if you saw that. No, but it's I didn't like see that. Burger clearly comes from burger and border being mangled, you know? Maybe that's the solution. We'll build the wall out of uh, McDonald's cheeseburgers. Well, I had them out of Whataburger. Well, I started with 203 patty burgers, and I switched it to one 600 patty burger to save bread. <laughs> it's on one of those communiques. <laughs> yeah. What is it? You're making the uh, communiques. They're actually good. You're making these communiques every single day, and it seems like they're all scripted. How much time do you put in every day to uh, make a new episode? Because they're pretty long too. About as much time as how long they are. Really, you're and, not. You don't spend a long time writing all the the jokes and all the news. No, I've, what I've been doing is watching, jotting stuff down. Uh, as I'm watching the news, I'll think of something funny and jot it down, and knowing that I'm going to do it the next morning. I learned not to do this shit. At, four o'clock in the morning <laughs> sure i used to post shit on facebook at three in the morning or you, you know all kinds of stuff but i, I now i know I, i'm i'm i've actually stuck to it every day and i'm like going uh 
So the night before, I just start writing stuff down, and it gets me excited, and I'm going, I mean, I'm having a blast doing this. I'm not, I mean, you know, I've got a lot of other stuff going on I could talk about, you know, but it's like, people are always going to say stuff about people because 99% of people project. So when they say I'm a loser. <laughs> oh. You can't you can't read the YouTube comments. They're all stupid. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. They'll bring you down a, a dark hole. Yeah, yeah, you're doing good work. You got to keep it I, up. Know, I have loved a lot of the YouTube comments on mine. I really, really appreciate it. And I, it's it's nice to get back in touch with. I got back on Facebook three or four years ago and got back in touch with a whole bunch of my friends that I hadn't got in touch with, you know. And this is a way to get in touch with the, the, the people who actually are fans of King of the Hill. I appreciate that. I mean, I love doing it dream job of all time like winning the lottery times 10 sure. probably but and that youtube uh, channel is johnny hardwick on youtube everybody you should go give it a subscribe go watch those communiques you got some good stuff in there thank you and you guys too keep an eye on rusty cage and are you you're putting stuff on twitch tv now are you putting other stuff on all hell chancellor susan or what's up with that uh, the the Dale Gribble video was a, a YouTube exclusive, other than my website MonkeyJones.tv. Okay. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm mixing and matching stuff all over the place. Uh, how do you like Twitch TV then? This seems cool. Yeah, it's great because they haven't banned you can me do it from live. Yet. Yeah, you can do yeah. it live. Too. Yeah, yeah, I like okay. doing stuff live. Ooh, yeah, I do too. I do too. I was really looking forward to this. I I mean. <laughs> yeah, you, you had uh, bits had a lot planned of show prep. And, and props and everything. I had a few bits planned. <laughs> I recorded it, so who knows what it'll look like. I'll, yeah. I might post that. I, like, I had my phone where it usually is, right here to the left, so it wasn't getting the same exact picture that I was giving you guys. But uh, if, if you want, I can just uh, uh, cut this and give it to you, and you can upload it yourself. The, what uh, we're no, I'll, just, I'll just link to yours. Oh, okay. Uh, does it look better, though? The background's not... I know it's not like shining. No, yeah, uh, it, I think it looks good. I like the the glowfish in the background. Ah! <laughs> how, how sensitive are they? Actually, people like this guy Rusty looks at the sun for minutes every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just for this reason. I like those glasses, man. Hey, thank you. They're uh, all the better to see with. <laughs> yeah, dear. they're kind of all, they're almost invisible, and yet they're John Lennon esque. In fact, I am working on a new character. Uh, let me see. I'll just show you real quick. See if this works. I got a couple okay. of different for it, but it, it's uh, John Lennon. <laughs> yes. John Lennon <laughs> with the aphids. Is he going to sing Here Comes the Sun? Asian man, the aphids, they sucked me dry. I don't know. <laughs> no, I want to hear John Lemon sing the Donald Jr. song. Yes, exactly. Because, yeah. see, the thing about the trick is here, we're playing six-dimensional chess now. Right. We're playing six-dimensional chess, and the, the trick is... I watched this interview, by the way, 71, to, to look at this. John Lennon talks like this on on uh, Dick Cavett. Yeah, with, uh, Dick Cavett, yeah, with uh, Yoko on there. With Yoko on there, and he just lights up a cigarette in the middle of it and everything. It's just awesome, you know? Uh, I don't know. What, what were we talking about? I think we're wrapping up. I think we've we've tackled everything we wanted to do. But if you want to come on again sometime, we would love to do this as often as you want to. That'd be fun. Uh, no, no. I, <laughs> Never it again. Was, it was soul crushing and horrifying. No, <laughs> I, no, no, I would love to. Either one of you guys is show for sure. And I'd love to. If I can figure out how to have people like on through Skype or something, I'll, I'll check out this. Is it difficult? No, a Twitch, once you figure it out, it's pretty simple. And I, I can okay. show you how to do some of the stuff. Well, I'm sorry that people had to wait because we were sitting there trying to figure out how to get We couldn't get either one of our Skypes to answer each other. Right. And yeah, this, this I is got, like a common occurrence. We're always getting uh, uh, fucked up trying to <laughs> get, get yeah. all this together. I started using it a few months ago, and I've had a couple of times where we just switched to phone, you know, for various reasons. But I think it's great. I think it's really cool. It's great. And I've, I've really enjoyed doing it now. 
All right. Well, I, I think with that, we will say goodbye to all the loving listeners watching at home. Folks, go check out Johnny Hardwick's YouTube channel. Don't check out Rusty Cages. He's corrupting the youth. Uh, it's I, I dangerous content. Videos anyways. <laughs> and uh, uh, Johnny Hardwick, I'll, I'll give you the final word. Word!